One of my most favorite things about the world of technology is its diversity. There's no telling how many experiences you'll have with the different devices out there. With the Ucatel K10000 serving for long enough, it was time for an upgrade. For the first time since owning a Galaxy S2 in 2011, I've decided to go the route of Samsung. Their devices have a drastically reformed appearance in retrospect to their classic design as with their software. Here's to my new daily driver, the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. What up everybody, Super Ice Cream Sandwich here. What's the difference between this device and my old device? And where are its specifications and what prompted me to switch over to the device? First, let's delve right into the specifications of the devices. As expected, we're looking at two completely different beasts under the hood. Every spec on the Galaxy S7 Edge is substantially superior to that of the Ucatel K10000. On the left, we have a quad-core 1 GHz MT6735 64-bit CPU, and on the right, the Snapdragon 820. RAM specifications are nearly identical, with the exception of RAM capacity. We have the Mali T720 GPU versus the Qualcomm Adreno 530 powering equally large displays with great disparities in resolution. The Ucatel K10000 drives significantly less pixels at 720p, coming in at 267 pixels per inch, whereas the Galaxy S7 Edge has a Quad HD display rocking 538 pixels per inch. Last on our list of basic specifications, the K10000 currently sits at Android 6.0 while the S7 Edge currently has Android 6.0.1. It is expected to be updated to Android 7.0. We have an 8 megapixel rear shooter versus a 12 megapixel and a 2 megapixel front facing versus a 5 megapixel front facing. Each camera has their own respective features, however the S7 Edge definitely has the better camera. Now that we're past the specs, let me start off by saying this. If I'd have not known how convenient fingerprint scanners were, I'd have gone my entire life without them. Now I can't stop playing with the home button every time I pick up the phone. There's a trick to avoiding having your thumb misread, and that's done by recording all of your thumb, instead of hitting it dead on like it asks you to. The split screen functionality is a very welcome feature I only dreamed of, and the extreme pixel density only makes this better. I can't get enough of the clarity of the screen. Going from 267 to 534 pixels per inch, lines look buttery smooth, and I cannot find individual pixels even if I press the screen to my eyes. This thing is a multitasking menace. This thing records 4K video. Three words, optical image stabilization. I sure as hell didn't have it in the old device and I sure as hell wouldn't want to go back. This thing all around is on a whole new level of quality I haven't seen on any smartphone I've owned to date, not even on the 3GS or 4 that I owned back in 2011. The glass curved edge is sexy. The sleek silver reflective finish is stunning. I would love to have a coral blue finish, but I can't find myself complaining after using this thing for a single day. It rekindles the love I had for Android in the same way my old Droid Razor Max did back in early 2012. Samsung seemed to have a relatively consistent build quality up until the S5 and kicked off a new era of design with the S6. The improvements of the S7 series was enough of a distraction. And man, oh man, oh, those curved edges, I can almost taste them. And that's about all the time I have for now because that's about as much insight as I have on the phone right now. I've only had this thing for a week and a half and I will provide an update sooner or later on my experiences with this device after I had it for an effective amount of time for me to be able to have an effective opinion about it in my perspective. By the way, uh, I just noticed we hit 100 subs and I'm almost at 10,000 views for my channel. Thank you guys so, so very much for subscribing and watching my content. It really makes me feel good that I have an audience that actually enjoys my content. Not because I'm here for the views or because I want to have a view count or whatever, but because this is kind of my hobby, but this is also kind of my adventure into technology and actually sharing it in a level that I haven't been able to before. You know, I've launched a few websites before. I've launched forum websites and stuff years ago, and none of it ever was able to maintain the level of audience that this channel does and I just want to keep that going and over time yeah I'll have more content and I'll have more stuff to be able to make videos on but again thank you guys so so very much I probably won't be doing a giveaway for a little while maybe probably not until like 250 subs maybe 500 subs but we'll keep it going 
because there's a lot of really interesting stuff that is coming up on my channel this year and I'm really excited to put it up on my channel. Thank you so very much for watching Super Ice Cream Sandwich over and out. Thank you.